Hi all, this is Zone FPV here, and today I'm joined by Zone FPV Sun. This is the third part in my series on the Snow Goose VTOL conversion. Uh, the first part was the unboxing video. The second part uh, talked about some of the build options. And then the third part uh, is the final video and shows the final build considerations uh, and of course shows a little bit of flying video. Yeah. So in the first part of this video, I'm going to just give you a bit of an update on the changes that I made compared to the last video and present just a bit of an overview of things. If you're really interested in looking at the build of the front tilt rotors, then go and check out the second video in this series. So this plane went together really easily and there was only a couple of things that were a bit tricky. Uh, for instance, the wing joiners didn't fit very well and I had to modify those. I also added a magnet to the main hatch and a screw for that magnet to attach to. An airspeed sensor was attached to the front of the plane and FEV equipment was added to that small front deck. The initial flight tests for this plane were performed without the wings and tail section attached and it quickly became apparent that the original design for the rear boom, which was a carbon bar, was just too flexible. On the first attempted hover, the elevator was reversed and didn't get very far. On the second hover, that rear boom twisted, and that was the result. And it exploded. Oh, maybe not exploded, but came close. So that meant a bit of a redesign for what had been a pretty cool original design with that aerodynamic sleeve that covered the carbon bar. But what you can see now is the carbon tube that I retrofitted to uh, the original design. If you want to download any of the parts, they're all up on Thingiverse, so you can go and have a look at them there. From that point on, there were no more explosions. <sighs> and the hovering tests were much more smooth. You can see now that the tails uh, and also the wingtips have attached and hovering was perfect, only required a small adjustment to the pigs. From there, I progressed really quickly onto the transition tests. Uh, and this is the first uh, transition which was performed uh, line of sight right now. Uh, plane went up very smoothly, uh, but in the transition, uh, it just seemed to slow down. Uh, and this left me scratching my head for a while, uh, modifying various settings, uh, trying to get things to work. Now, at this point, the airspeed sensor wasn't actually fitted to the plane, and that was actually the, the reason why um, the transitions were getting bogged down. Jumping to the onboard camera, uh, you can see what happens. At the moment, bottom right corner of the screen, you can see the mode. A Q stabilize for the vertical ascent. I flick it into fly by wire mode, and those motors on the front start to lean forward. But you can see um, uh, the ground speed on the left side of the screen in the middle isn't really uh, increasing. So even though the motors were tilting forward, the plane wasn't accelerating. Thankfully, the really cool thing about having um, a quad plane is that you can just flick it back into Q stabilize mode, those front motors. A change in position to face upwards again and in this case I just flew it back. What you can see now is a graph that explains what was going on during those transitions. So you can see the modes at the bottom of the screen and the green line that I'm tracing with the cursor at the moment is um, the commanded throttle while the two lines above that um, are the outputs to the front two motors. You can see there that there's a transition from due stabilized to fly-by-wire mode but at the point of transition the plane uh, power output to those motors actually decreases. Fitting a, an airspeed sensor though uh, to the plane rectified all those problems. The issue is though that you need to calibrate your airspeed sensor and it's said to be better to fly without um, an airspeed sensor than with an airspeed sensor which is poorly calibrated. But I managed to get through a transition and that's the image you, you're looking at uh, right now filmed by... Um, me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and once that transition was complete, I was able to calibrate the sensor, um, the airspeed sensor, and then use it for all, all future transitions and flights, and that's been great. 
Uh, this is just that little bit of footage that was used to open this video. And one of the really fun things to do with a quad plane is just to very quickly, in a very short distance, completely change uh, direction by flicking it uh, into uh, Q stabilize mode from fly-by-wire mode. Uh, this, is, this is some video footage of a descent. So I flicked from fly-by-wire mode into Q stabilize mode. And that descent was uh, probably a little bit too fast. Uh, you'll see some onboard footage from that transition in a second, but basically the descent was very quick and got a little bit too wobbly. And it's probably better to, to pace uh, the descents with this kind of plane. And I took all the video. Yeah, I'm very thankful that um, my son was there uh, with the uh, camera on the gimbal and able to take a whole bunch of the video uh, that you're seeing now. Uh, what we're looking at now is just some onboard video from the FPV camera and uh, it shows a transition and then that uh, very wobbly descent uh, that I showed you a moment ago. But I thought I might talk about uh, some of the statistics of the plane while we look at this. Uh, you can see in the uh, climb uh, that uh, the amp draw, some cases was up to 60 something amps. Uh, generally speaking, hovering is around about uh, 40 amps and this is on a four cell pack. However, when just the front two motors are in use, the amp draw is much, much lower, uh, around about 14 amps, so about 7 amps uh, per motor. Currently, I'm flying two packs, uh, which are 5,800 each. Uh, the motors are 3,508, 700 kV, and they're swinging 12 by 8 inch props. Overall, the front motors are possibly a little bit underpowered as they sometimes max out uh, during the ascent stage. Overall, this has been a really fun project. Um, the Snow Goose flies really well in, in both VTOL and forward flight modes. If you're considering a build, check out Thingiverse and good luck with your build. Bye.